celebrate our United Way's fabulous success in 1999. My name is Terry Connor. I'm the Chief Information Officer for Liberty Mutual here in Portsmouth, and I've been fortunate to serve this year as the overall New England campaign chair for Liberty's 1999 United Way campaign. I'm also fortunate in that I get to serve as the volunteer vice president of the United Way's Greater Seacoast Board of Directors. Tonight I'm filling in for Dave Brownell, uh, the United Way board president, who could not be here but sent his regrets. I'm also proud tonight to be able to introduce a long-term and recently retired Liberty Mutual employee, a 1999 United Way loan executive, and lead singer for the State Street Rhythm and Blues Band, Wes Collins. <laughs> Wes is going to sing the national anthem for us, if you would all please stand. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rock. State Street Rhythm and Blues Band for the great entertainment they've provided so far this evening. The band will be playing. The band will be playing again at the end of the evening, and dancing is encouraged. As we begin the program, I'd like to take a few moments to recognize one retiring board member this year. Alan Reed Erickson is the executive director of the Child Development Center of Stratford County a partner agency of the United Way, and he's represented the partner agencies to the board for the past two years. Alan, thank you so much for your participation, your thoughtful feedback, your humor, and your assistance to the United Way board and to the staff. You're a credit to the community, and we really appreciate you. If you please stand. Thank you, Alan. The next person we'd like to recognize is Ron Grondin with Public Service of New Hampshire. Ron has served as a volunteer with this United Way for well over 10 years. Most recently, he completed his first three-year term as a member of the Board of Directors, as well as a three-year term as the Allocations Chairperson. Ron is an enthusiastic and committed volunteer who treats his volunteer responsibilities with the same dedication and attention that he does in his normal job. He is a warm, caring, and good-humored individual. 
volunteers and staff alike have enjoyed their work with him and look forward to many more opportunities to work with Ron in the years to come. Ron, if you would please come forward for a token of our appreciation. the entire volunteer board of directors for the United Way of the Greater Seacoast. So would all of the directors, including all the new members, please stand to be recognized. And we'd like to thank you for the hard work that you do on behalf of this community. Please stand. like to recognize. This gentleman has served as our United Way Board President for the past two years. And although he is retired as our leader and board president, we're lucky to have his continued services as a board member. Please help me thank Greg Sanborn, Executive Assistant for the President of the University of New Hampshire, for his commitment and his hard work on behalf of this United Way and this entire community. Over the past three years, Greg has led the United Way through a strategic plan, a move to terrific new uh, facilities, three successful campaigns, the development of a major gifts campaign, and the opening of a volunteer action center. Quite a record of achievement. Greg, please come forward and receive a token of our appreciation. <laughs> I thank everyone for um, all that you have done over the, uh, the past uh, three years that, that I have had the opportunity and the pleasure to serve as your board chairman. Um, our accomplishments are your accomplishments and you deserve all the credit. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to thank all of the 78 United Way of the Greater Seacoast partner agencies. If you work or volunteer with one of our partner agencies, we'd also like for you to stand and be recognized. Because the 78 partner agencies are the United Way. And we thank all of you for the amazing work that you do for this community. Because you are the ones that really make us strong. Please stand and be recognized. we'd like to recognize everyone who volunteers for this terrific United Way. And it's an impressive number of people. So we thought it would be fun for everyone to see all of the different people involved in the good work that's accomplished by this United Way organization. So if you work on any of the committees, be it campaign, allocations, technology, communications, major gifts, personnel, Volunteer Action Center, Special Grant, or any other United Way of the Greater Seacoast Committee, or if you volunteer on the day of caring, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> that was a great chance for everybody to stretch. <laughs> It really is an amazing, amazing organization and an amazing community. Now I'd like to introduce somebody uh, to speak to the group. Kevin Murphy, who works with the Southeast New Hampshire Services. Kevin is a Dover resident and a strong community activist. 
Tonight, he's representing AIDS Response Seacoast and is here to say a few words to remind us why we're all here tonight. Kevin, if you come forward, please. on this cold night delivering the message. Next, I'd like to introduce our 1999 United Way campaign chair, Fred Quinn, president of Pierce and Stevens and Seagrove. Right. Right, 
you are all good to come out to the uh, <coughs> first winter snowstorm of the new millennium or the first uh, or last snowstorm of the old millennium, depending on how you count 100 years. <laughs> a debate that raged at our table at the moment ago. We're here tonight to do a lot of recognition, and the first thing uh, in that process is to announce to you that we have not only met our campaign goal of $3.7 million, we've exceeded it. And are currently running. Right I'd like to applaud you do for yourselves because it's uh, through your effort uh, that this is possible. We're now at $3.75 million, uh, and hopefully we'll be uh, climbing. And uh, this is always for the benefit of the 78 uh, partner agencies, of which you've just heard about uh, one of them. There are some very important people that make uh, all of this possible, and through the course of the next uh, hour you'll hear more about them. But I'd like to start by introducing you to the uh, campaign cabinet. If you'll open the purple book in the uh, table on the inside cover, I'm going to run down and ask the, them all to come forward. I'd ask you to hold your applause until the end, at which time a standing ovation of 10 minutes duration would be appropriate. <laughs> well, let me start with Bill Cormier, my vice chair, Bob Schoenberger, Peter Reno, if you'd all come up, please. You didn't go home, did you? <laughs> Chuck Manzella, William Burke, Bill Burke, Dan McGurl, Larry Runlett, Mary Scher, Harold Eichel, Walter Dwyer, Chuck Wieson, uh, Alan Reed Erickson, Luann uh, Wachinski, Fred Weston, Dan Dolan, Colonel Ken Clark, Paula Riggles, Ruggles, Gwen Reserve, Ellen Lavin, Ray Mayer, Josh Weller, and Pat Holmes. job and any campaign that uh, you're running is run on the history of those who came before you and set the uh, stage for an ever increasing threshold that we've exceeded year after year and a number of the people that have just come up uh, who would like to remind us all of their fine work uh, were campaign chairman uh, before me and it's because of the efforts they made that we are at the level we are at uh, in 1999 uh, Peter Hamlet's probably not in the room, uh, but Bill Burke, Chuck Mantell, and Harold Eichel all preceded me, and they did a fantastic job. So again, uh, to thank them. Yes. see me go. This was a number of rough meetings that we had here. Uh, all this humor that comes from this wonderful group of people. Uh, every year I think we try very hard to uh, thank not only the companies but the individuals involved in uh, running the campaigns and who participate in the campaigns. And I think the biggest challenge is that we'd like to bring everybody up to this stage and thank them all personally and individually but uh, obviously we'd be here for quite a long time. Um, we are asked uh, often uh, what companies give the most uh, to the United Way uh, when you combine their employee contribution with their corporate gifts uh, together. And I'd like to present to you tonight the top ten companies in the greater Seacoast uh, and invite them up to the stage. Uh, but before I do, uh, I want you to be aware that these ten companies account for uh, 1.5 million dollars of that uh, 3.7 that we are raising, uh, 3.75, and that's 40% uh, of our campaign, so you can appreciate they are very, very important to us. So as I go through uh, a David Letterman type uh, top 10, uh, I should be careful, I'll have a heart bypass surgery tomorrow. Uh, do we have a drum roll to... Uh, Enhance this? We don't. The drummer took a break. Well, let me start uh, in our top ten. And the first company I'd like you to be introduced to is Liberty Mutual. 
accepting the award on behalf of Liberty uh, Locations and Employees is uh, Mike Nearney and Bonnie Ward. If you would come forward. Our next uh, recognized company is the Portsmouth, uh, I guess the bubble. Right? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Thank you. Portsmouth Naval Shipyard and accepting the award on behalf of the shipyard employees is Ray Mayer of the Combined Federal uh, Campaign Coordinator. Number three, uh, and if you would hold for a moment, because we have uh, to introduce three uh, different groups from Tyco, uh, and I'll ask all three groups to come up uh, first. The first is uh, Tyco International Limited, and accepting the uh, award as a campaign coordinator, Tina Hall, followed by Tyco Subsystems Limited, accepting as a general manager, Todd Forkey. And third, their group in their group, Simplex Technologies, and accepting his campaign coordinator, Kendra Burke. Please come up. For your Next in uh, our drum roll is North Atlantic Energy Service Corporation, Seabrook Station, and accepting his campaign coordinator. Joe Grillo. Joe? And as we roll down the top 10, Walmart Distribution Center and accepting the award for the Walmart Distribution Center are coordinators Heath Cooper and Tracy Hathaway. closer to the podium next year for the top 10. Thank you. On the list is a continuous Heidelberg uh, web systems and accepting our campaign coordinators, Wanda Michael and Melissa Nickel. Next, to introduce General Electric uh, Meter Systems and accepting the campa our campaign coordinators, uh, Dan Delavecchia and Zelda Kenny. <laughs> Fisher Scientific International and Latona uh, Associates and accepting as campaign coordinator, Pat Reed for both uh, entities. Pat? Erie Scientific Company, uh, accepting for Erie Scientific is uh, Regina Park and Mary Norton. Uh, and I do know they will not be here. And finally, uh, the University of New Hampshire and accepting his campaign coordinator, Lila Moore. Thank you and congratulations to, uh, to this top 10 group. Uh, we can't do it without you and all the employees that are a part of your organizations. We also have tonight uh, in breaking new ground and award recognition is kind of our own People's Choice Award. Uh, and our loaned executives who you'll be meeting uh, in not uh, two many minutes from now, were asked to uh, submit a name for a new category called Outstanding Campaign Coordinator Award. And these campaign coordinators were the creative uh, forces, uh, responsive, uh, focused on the education and fund that uh, made up all of the many campaigns uh, that went on here in the greater Seacoast. Uh, we value all of those who take on this role to run campaigns in their uh, company. Uh, but these next few people represent the loan executive's choice. And I'd like you to come forward and accept the plaque with our sincere thanks. For outstanding campaign coordinator, uh, Rianne Crane of Willis of New Hampshire. <laughs> All right, 
think if I may do it administrative, is I'll ask them to come up and then we'll do that standing ovation with 10 minute round of applause. Uh, Joe Grilla and Stella Dumas uh, and their wonderful committee from the Seabrook Station. Stacy Frangos of Northeast Credit Union. Pat Ree of Fisher Scientific. Carol Newbury of the Mark Wentworth Home. Gwen Reserve of Riverwoods at Exeter. Uh, Joe McCooey, Brian Collins, Donna Anderson of Developmental Services of Stratford County. Joseph Goudreau of Celestica, New England. Gail Stefanik uh, of Federal Savings Bank. <laughs> Carmen uh, Zappala of Seacoast Coca-Cola. Steve Scott of uh, Granite Bank. Please accept our warmth of appreciation. The final campaign uh, awards that we'll give out tonight uh, for the outstanding communication partners, and these are the folks that help to get our message out into the community, and without their help, uh, it would be difficult for us to reach as many people as we do and over the geography that we try to cover. And we are genuinely grateful for the message that they make for us and on behalf of the 78 United Way partner agencies. So if you would come forward to be recognized, I'd ask Pat Holmes of Centuria, BES Advertising, to come forward, Wayne Chick of Foster's Daily Democrat, Tom Giovanelli of Media One, uh, Janet Ford, uh, if she's here, uh, from AMFM, WHEB, and WERZ. Jay Murphy from Seacoast Newspapers. <coughs> Wanda Michaels from the Heidelberg Web Press. And to each of you, our, our heartfelt thanks for the extraordinary effort that you make in uh, communicating that message for us all. My final moment as the 1999 campaign chair is to pass the baton, in this case the wings, which by the way are above you in the many balloon designs you may see and have uh, angry faces on them, to the next year's uh, campaign chair. Uh, Bob Schoenberger of Unitil uh, has uh, accepted the, uh, the challenge of reaching $4 million and assures me that uh, this will be an easy reach for him. Uh, I regret to say that he is not here at this moment, and that's because he's left early to start the campaign, <laughs> which is probably prudent. Uh, Bob couldn't be here because his son uh, is involved in a, uh, a school event that uh, I think we all appreciate is an important thing to be, uh, be doing. I conclude by thanking my cabinet for the extraordinary effort they made, for the loan executives, for all that they do to make this uh, campaign sustain itself, and to the exceptional staff of the United Way who work on all of our behalf in the community in which we live and work. Many thanks to all of them, and finally, most especially to all of you who make $3.75 million possible for the needs of the greater Seacoast community. To you, thank you. campaign, if, uh, if you don't mind, we're going to uh, honor you with a chair as well, but you probably need to rest after that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, now it's come to the point in the, uh, the evening where I'm proud to present the very special Richard S. Lockhart Memorial Award. This award is given to someone who, like Dick Lockhart, has made extraordinary contributions to enhance the quality of life in the greater seacoast. This award is a lasting memory to a man who exemplified caring and involvement in everything he did. In the past few years, the award has been given to Kevin and Harry McLeod, and thank you, Dokens, Henry Powers, Frank Kozaka, Sophie and Henry Baronski, James Labrie, and Ann May and Lee Ballard. Before we make the actual presentation of this year's award, I'd like to take a moment to recognize Mrs. Joan Lockhart. Mrs. Lockhart, if you please stand. She was here earlier, I know. This, this is the best you have for tonight. Okay, thank you. <laughs> when looking at the nomination, it's clear that Jack Pasman made an enormous impact on many, many people during his too short life. Very sadly, Jack died suddenly this past November. His friends and co-workers at General Electric felt compelled to make sure that Jack and his legacy of caring would not be forgotten. They wrote a beautiful tribute when they nominated Jack to posthumously receive the 2000 Richard S. Lockhart Memorial Award. Pictured here, Jack is delivering gifts to the Summersworth Group Home. This was one of his favorite holiday activities. Jack was always thrilled when his co-workers' generous response to the kids' wishes, especially when an unusual wish was fulfilled. That in this scene, he has an aquarium to fulfill an unusual wish, an unusual wish, pardon, and he's preparing to load it for delivery to the group home. The love Jack felt for life and for helping others cannot be put more beautifully than in the words of his co-worker, Zelda Kennedy, which I'll paraphrase. Most often, Jack channeled his community service efforts through the GE Elfin Society, an organization of GE volunteers where he exemplified leadership, unparalleled enthusiasm, and a deep love for humanity. And although he no longer graces us with his earthly presence, the extraordinary contributions he made to improve so many lives will be felt for years to come. Jack never met a project he didn't like. His eyes would light up whenever he heard of an activity to volunteer for or a new opportunity through which he could reach out to others. He especially liked the United Way's Day of Caring and had not missed participating in a single one Leading a or and leading a project in almost everyone since its inception. Zelda continues, we only need to look at the results of a few of the most recent projects that Jack was involved in to be reminded that in fact one person can make a difference. We'll be reminded of Jack when we see children laughing and playing on playgrounds that he worked on at Hub Family Support Center and on many other playgrounds throughout the Seacoast community. We'll remember him when we imagine children hiking along trails or crossing the footbridge at the Stratford County YMCA summer day camp. Or when the boys at the Summersworth group are working off their youthful energy by playing basketball on a lighted court, a court that Jack helped to build. We'll remember him when his engineering team returns to Dover High School without him but in his memory as mentors to the school's honor physics class. And we'll remember Jack Pasden when we hear the happy chatter of families preparing dinner in one of the Habitat for Humanity homes that he helped build in the seacoast. These are but a few ways that the extraordinary Jack Pasden found the power in himself and in others to make the seacoast a better place to live. Perhaps his most important legacy is not the projects listed, but in the inspiration for others to follow his lead and to do our part to make a difference. Tremendous words. 
accepting the award in memory of Jack, Pasden, or his children, Melissa and John. Please help me in welcoming them. the Executive Director of the United Way of the Greater Seacoast. She has brought our United Way to terrific new heights over the past few years, and we're so lucky to have her leading us. Please join me in welcoming Sue Souter, United Way of the Greater Seacoast Executive Director. Thank you, Terry, and, and I really appreciate the Pazden family coming tonight. I know, excuse me, what a struggle it is. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. I, I can't begin to tell you how thankful we are to all of you for the part that you play in this campaign. You know that the campaign is raised by thousands of people, really, on the seacoast. 3.75 million, and I have to tell you that right now, as we as we are here, Anne Holiday and Maria Solari, uh, Anne Holiday is our new allocations chairman, and Maria Solari, where are you? Do I know the two of you are somewhere around here? Um, uh, are hard at work recruiting about 120 people that will be giving out the money that you all raised. And I know many of you in this room will be part of that process. And I hope people understand that United Way dollars stay local unless they are designated out of the area by a donor. And that the, the, the dollars are given out by volunteers who ensure that your dollars are well spent. So I want to make sure that, uh, that you know that you have the assurance that the money that you raised uh, will be well spent. I did want to point out on the tables in front of you, the Senate pieces were made by the Stratford County YMCA. And I know Andy Hamlet is here and probably some of his staff. Thank you very much to the children who made them. Portsmouth Community Child Care Center, which I believe is represented here tonight. They, their children also made those centerpieces for you. And um, someone can take them home at the table. It'll be interesting to see how you decide that, but <laughs> one person can take them home. I uh, just have a couple of quick thank yous, and then I'm going to introduce the loaned executives, and then I'm actually going to turn it over to our wonderful uh, entertainment tonight. But I did, uh, first of all, want to have Susan Dewhurst. Is she in the room? Susan Dewhurst is our communications director. She is just, I always call her a crackerjack. She's right there. She's unbelievable. And she's the one who coordinates this with a lot of people, of course, but she's fabulous. And Susan, would you stand up, please? like to thank Jokins and all the staff. I know it's a lot of work with all these people in here, and I do appreciate it. Um, I also just quickly uh, want to, if, if the staff of the United Way, and we have some key volunteers here, could stand. I'm just going to read their first names so that you can see who they are. Uh, Maria, Susan, Megan, Cindy, Tim, Sherry, Ray, Lisa, Joanne, Marge, Darlene, Rachel, Dot, and I hope I got everybody. Please, Robin. Oh. Because I looked her out, I have to tell you that she's our new volunteer center director. So there'll be a one-stop shopping for volunteers on the seacoast very soon. I'm sorry. Um, 
I'd also um, like to introduce Megan Hamlet. Megan Hamlet is our campaign director, and she has been with us about a year. You may have seen her during the course of the year. She and Andy just uh, had, uh, look at her, she had a baby three weeks ago. <laughs> Can you believe that? Anyway, she's our campaign director, and she uh, worked with 10 loaned executives who helped conduct campaigns. Let me just quickly tell you, a loaned executive is loaned by their company to work in general, full time for United Way, from the end of August to Christmas, or the holidays. So almost four months these people are with us, and we love our loaned executives. They are each assigned 30 to 50 companies, and their responsibility is to ensure that you people who run campaigns within companies or nonprofits, that you have the support you need in order to conduct an educational fund campaign. So they do a super job, and I would like to introduce them. And if they were your loan executive, would you give them a nice round of applause? And I'd like to start out with someone who has been with us for seven years, and that is Gordon Abbott from Liberty Mutual. Next, I'd like to, if you could just stay up here, that would be great, just so that they could see everybody. Uh, next, we have uh, someone who started this first year, uh, but is from Liberty Mutual as well, and that is the singer of the State Street Rhythm and Blues Band, and what a fabulous singer, and a loan executive, Wes Collins. from Liberty Mutual, and that is Al French. <laughs> Next is a gentleman who spent his first year as a loan executive with us, representing Bottom Line Technologies, and just did a wonderful job, and that is Phil Grannon. Phil. executive and representing the New Hampshire Air National Guard is Master Sergeant Gordon Hay. <laughs> representing the Bank of New Hampshire is wonderful Marianne Hemming. We did have a UNH intern from the MSW School of Social Work. She could not be here this evening because she had class, and uh, she had missed her class during training, and she decided she would not be able to be here. But her name is Heidi Howard, and she continues with us in the allocations process. <laughs> the next person is someone that is sponsored by Tyco International, and that is the perky Carol Lee. <laughs> we, uh, then we have three, uh, two people left, uh, a second year loan executive from Seabrook Station and is a wonderful inspiration, and that is Janice McDougall. executive is a second year loan executive sponsored by Osram Sylvania and Bell Atlantic and that is Shirley Tilton. The fabulous mother of the I just want all ten of these people to know that truly the campaigns that we always say the loan executives are the lifeblood of the campaign as they assist you with your campaign. And again, we can't thank you enough. Thank you very much, and we hope you come back next year.
I just want to mention that if any company is interested, we are recruiting our loan executives now for next year. Liberty Mutual has already made a commitment, and several other companies have, and we're hoping that a few more step up to the plate. It's a wonderful experience for all, and it's a win-win experience for everybody. Um, at this point, I'm delighted to introduce Susan Poulin. She is a Maine native. She represents Pool Isle Productions. She has performed comedy from Maine, Maine to Minnesota. Susan and her husband Gordon have, per have produced performances such as Ida, Woman Who Runs with the Moose, Spousal Deafness, and Other Bones of Contention, which I understand she's doing at the Governor's Inn. The 29th, sorry. The, the 29th of this, of, uh, January, uh, which I'm, I informed my husband we were going to. Um, and also, In My Head, I'm Thin is another uh, production that they do. Susan performs today as Ida LeClaire, United Way volunteer, which means she is an angel. Ida. And we're just going to take a minute and move this just for one second. these wings on all night. Thank you, Dia. Hi, Dia. How you doing? Oh, why did the angel cross the road? To help the chicken. <laughs> oh, God, I know you're supposed to start a speech off with a joke, and so I racked my brain trying to come up with one about angels, and I just couldn't think of any. Except that one about how the angel got on top of the Christmas tree, and I'm just not gonna go there. <laughs> My name's Ida LaClaire, and I live in Mahusik Mills, Maine. That's a small town in western Maine. I live there with my husband, Charlie. We have a beautiful double-wide mobile home there, and I just love it. I'd like to thank the United Way of the Greatest Seacoast for inviting me here to speak this evening. So it was nice to have an opportunity to come south door in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, besides, I, I just can't do enough for the United Way, and apparently neither can any of you, or else you wouldn't be here. <laughs> Once again, I was key person at the Mahusik Mills a and I'm a cashier there. I've been working at the A&P for over 30 years, so I have seniority. I work Monday through Friday, 11 to 5, and I just love it. So I was wicked excited when I found out that this year's United Way fundraising theme was angels. Oh, that is right up my alley. I have been collecting anything that has to do with angels for years. I have framed angel pictures and little stuffed angels all over the house. Angel pot holders, angel stationery. And the collection of angel dolls I got on QVC door in my home shop and network a whole day. <laughs> That's another story. I brought along a few of my favorites. I have them in this little um, angel bag, little teddy bear angels. Isn't that adorable? Now, it's not too late. I have a beautiful angel calendar here. So if you haven't got your calendar this year or your month at a glance, it's not too late. You can probably get a good deal. I think they're on sale. Just the one in the, there's a lot of naked angels in here that, that bothers you. This is one of my favorite things, glow-in-the-dark cherubs. Cherubs are little angels. And these are wonderful. You can put them on your house plants. I have, I have, there's 60 of them in this, in this, they're little, they're, they're tiny ones. They, 60 glow-in-the-dark cherubs just in this box. And I took all 60 and I put it on a fake ficus tree. That's what called a, a faux ficus tree that I, I, I got at, um, at Kmart, part of the uh, Martha Stewart collection. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is a conversation piece when people come <laughs> over. Now, my favorite thing is this little fella. It's just adorable. Again, it's a teddy bear angel, but it's not just a regular teddy bear angel. It's a cowboy teddy bear angel. <laughs> See if you can get a close-up. <laughs> and uh, what I'd like 
about him the most. He's kind of scruffy, and he has a little patch on his head, and his fur's a little scruffy. He looks kind of sad, and, and that's why I love him the most. Aren't they wicked, Connor? <laughs> well, I'm still leaking right now. So cute. So, this year at the AMP, we use the usual incentives. Okay. We use the usual incentive to get our employees to pledge. We have a lottery where you can bet on a whole bunch of things. What day the Moose River's gonna freeze over. <laughs> Who's gonna bag the first deer in town. When Kelly O'Connor's gonna have another baby, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a craft fair. That's where we sell crafts. <laughs> to people who are craft and pay it. <laughs> Yeah, we come up with a couple of things that just might put Mahotic Mills on the map. You want to see what I mean? Yeah. Sally and Ed Jordan have been making these in their garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed mostly. Sally, just think of it. <laughs> <laughs> we call this a Ruskett County cleavage. <laughs> kind of looks like him, don't it? <laughs> you laugh, a couple of months you're going to be seeing these in People, Home Shopping, Catalog. <laughs> Sally and Ed going right to the top with this one. They play their cards, right? <laughs> Simply tell a child, all we need is one good idea. You see it in People magazine all the time, how somebody thought of this, of that, and now the millionaires. No Ed McMahon or nothing. It don't have to be profound. Just one good idea, then bing, bang, boom, you can buy yourself a deluxe RV, go to Branson two, three times a year. But you know, Charlie just can't picture it. Besides, he says, I ain't posing for no lawn ornament. <laughs> I was kind of inspired by Sally and Ed's creation. And you know, I'm a little artsy myself. So I thought, if I put my mind to it, I bet I could come up with something, too. And you know what? I did. <laughs> so I'll show it to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a sneak peek at the infomercial I've been working on. See, they think they're selling like hotcakes around here, yeah? And everyone's saying I should go national. You ready? Here it goes. Hi there. My name's Ida LeClaire. And I don't know about you, but every time I buy a new piece of clothing, I do the same thing. I bring it home and I carefully cut the shoulder pads out. Oh, you know, every once in a while I run across something in my closet that still has the shoulder pads in it. It's usually a good dress I was afraid to mess with, and it looks fine. Until I put on my suit jacket and my winter coat, and then I get what I call compound shoulder pad syndrome. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so my ears are warm, but my neck's dissipating. <laughs> It always ends the same way. I grab two, four, or all six of them shoulder pads, and I just rip them right out. <laughs> now, you'll notice that the shoulder pads in men's clothing are kept where they belong, in their suit jackets. The fashion designers don't muck up the shoulders of their shirts and sweaters, do they? <laughs> and their shoulder pads are delicate little well-made things sewn into the jacket under the lining. Not big lumps of padding that scrunch up when they're washed, but suddenly start to wander like they have a mind of their own. <laughs> All of a sudden, I look down, I see a third breast sticking right out of my chest. <laughs> I catch a glimpse of myself in, in, a, in a mirror, and I think, move over, Quasimodo. <laughs> so I just cut the annoying things out right off the bat, or I'll just rip them out later. But you know what? For some reason, I never throw them out. <laughs> do you do the same thing? I don't know how many times I've been looking for something in my linen closet, out drops a big plastic bag just filled with shoulder pads. <laughs> or I'll open up my underwear drawer, there's a bunch of shoulder pads just sitting there like overgrown fortune cookies. <laughs> or how about the ones with Velcro in your nylon drawer? <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> So for years, I saved these things in spite of myself. Then, one day, it dawned on me. I finally know what to do with them. Here, look at this. They got handsome decoration for the front door for the holiday. Non-denominational. 
<laughs> hey, Martha Stewart, move over. In my new book, Shoulder the Responsibility, <laughs> I'll help you explore the possibilities. Possibilities. Window treatment. Roll pillow. Mobile for the baby. There's a gazillion ways to recycle these things. Or the shoulder the responsibility today, and you will get an angel ornament starter kit. <laughs> complete with three shoulder pads, wings, and a halo. <laughs> this is I don't class say and don't just think about it. Get off of your duff and do it. <laughs> Quite a thing, not to share me. From the printer, but you know those reeds have been selling like hot cakes. We sold out of them at the craft fair. All proceeds going to the United Way, of course. But you know, I was getting a little discouraged. Even with the usual incentives of craft fair, the lottery, our pledges were down this year, and I knew I had to come up with something really special. So I did some brainstorming with my friend, the last reader, Betty Dot and Shirley. We call ourselves the women who run with the most. <laughs> and frankly, we were just born to be wild. <laughs> so it took a bit, but we finally come up with an incentive that worked like a charm. You know that old Jimmy Stewart movie, It's a Wonderful Life? Oh, I always love It's a Wonderful Life. Because it is, when you think about it. And in the movie, a bell rings when an angel earns his wings. It, it rings at the end when Clarence gets his wings, and I just cry every time. So I got to thinking about what I could use as a reward when a co-worker pledged to the United Way and earned his wings. See, the bell ringing was good, but I wanted to come up with something even better. And then, because I was thinking about movies anyway, that Bette Midler song, You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings, just popped into my head. From that movie Beaches, did you see it? Oh, God, it was wicked sad. <laughs> I, cried so much, I cried so much I had a headache by the time it was over. Now, that's a good movie. So, I have my own rating systems for movies. First off, does it make me cry? Like Sleepless in Seattle, four Kleenexes, pretty good score. Terms of endearment, a travel pack of Kleenexes, two napkins in the sleeve of my blouse, very good. <laughs> uh, English patient, I don't know because I fell asleep. <laughs> God, was that thing slow. <laughs> I'm so tired of watching that fella treat through the desert. <laughs> English patient, one Kleenex I use it to wipe away drool from my nap doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> then there's hunk factor. See, if a movie's a little light in the story department, but the actor's easy on the eyes, I cut it some slack. <laughs> like Mel, Mel Gibson. He's been in some clunkers, but I go to every one. Why? He's a hunk, am I right? <laughs> Take Braveheart. In my opinion, there was too much fighting and not enough sex. <laughs> Frankly, I wanted to see more Mel. Kept waiting for a stiff breeze to come along and lift up that clip kilt. No go. But breeze or no, I love that movie because of the hunk factor. Now, the real clunk of movies, they belong in the toilet. For them, I've developed a flusher system. Now, what's an example? Pulp Fiction. What was going on in that one? <laughs> Even John Travolta, who's a hunk, couldn't say that. Pulp Fiction, double flusher. <laughs> so anyway, Beaches, five Kleenexes and Charlie's handkerchief. Now that's a very high score. And I just love that song, Wind Beneath My Wings. It makes me cry every time. So with this year's United Way fundraising theme being angels, I thought maybe I could rewrite the song a little. Instead of fly like an eagle, why not fly like an angel? I wouldn't have to change the song too much. Um, Charlie and the girls thought it was a wonderful idea. So we worked real hard on it and come out wicked good if I do say so myself. So my idea was, uh, when a co-worker pledged to the United Way, I would sing them the song as I gave them their wings, kind of like a reward. Fly like an angel. You are the wind beneath my wings. But it turns out that not everyone loves that song as much as I do. <laughs> I know, it was a surprise to me too. <laughs> Pretty soon the pledges started to fall off. Maybe it was my singing, I don't know, but it hurt my pride something here. And frankly, I was a bit blue about it. Then I thought, Ida, the United Way and the people
people they have, the more important than your silly pride, get over it. How can you make the best of the situation? Then it come to me. If I couldn't use my beautiful song as a reward, I could use it as an incentive. <laughs> See, I would go up to a co-worker and sing the song until they pledged. <laughs> Beneath my wings. Had enough? <laughs> oh, it worked like a charm. Before long, I'd hand someone a pledge cat, and before I could take my beginning breath, they'd be furiously filling that thing out. And if they were being a little cheap, and in northern Maine, that's no surprise. Some of them Yankees are so tight, they practically squeak when they walk. You know, son? Well, if they were being cheap, I'd just sing louder and the pledge is sore. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm happy to report that once again at the Mahoset Mills A&P we had a record breaking fun drive. Cost us no $3.75 million, not so shabby. But you know, if this book of mine takes off next year, you might just have some stiff competition from the North Country. <laughs> so I'd like to close by once again thanking the United Way, the greatest sea coast, for inviting me here to speak this evening, and thanking you for being such a nice audience. I'm just really, really touched by the whole thing. In fact, that reminds me of that wonderful Celine Dion song. <laughs> My heart goes on. Do you know what I mean? Well. As your reward for making your fundraising goal, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for supporting me all the way. <laughs> Thank you. Next year's campaign kicks off September 12th, uh, and uh, we hope there's a large turnout. We hope you can all make it. Um, we want to thank Wes and his band for all the music tonight, and want to remind all of you that they'll be staying uh, to uh, provide more music, and as I said earlier, dancing is encouraged. Uh, thank you for that last performance by Wayne Ida. That was truly memorable. And to the rest of you, enjoy the rest of the evening. And uh, we thank you so much for your support this year. Thank you.